Okay, so to start here, we're going to do a left chest logo. We have chosen the DTG logo here. Um, it's right now about eight inches wide or a little over eight inches wide. It is 300 DPI. Um, and we're gonna print this to a colored shirt, all right? Keeping that in mind, if I try to print this in any of the under base print modes, if I leave this just as a JPEG, it's gonna print a big white box around it, all right? So I've gotta be able to remove this background here to uh, be able to do that. So I'm gonna prep this image here. All right, so I've got all these different tools that I can use. Um, let's see here. So you got like move tools, go through and get Photoshop training. One of the best Photoshop trainings that I found so far that's free online is lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. Um, and they go through everything from just the basic layout of Photoshop to uh, non-destructive photo editing, creating images, using multiple images to make up one. Um, and then if you want to go to more advanced kind of fun little tricks, there's uh, some stuff online called Photoshop Top Secrets. Just do a Google search for that. There's a bunch of DVD series or you can download them and watch them and do the projects with them. Uh, I learned a lot of cool stuff with that. All right, so let's go through. I'm going to use a tool called the Magic Wand here. The Magic Wand, and if I don't have that, it usually defaults to the Quick Selection tool. So I just click on my Magic Wand tool. It is a selection tool. What it does is it, when you click somewhere on your screen, these are pixels, all right? Pixels are what make up a, an image, a raster-based image. Let's zoom in and see if we can see that. So the closer you get in, you notice that you see these little squares. Each one of these little squares is considered a pixel, all right? You notice that on a lot of edges and stuff that they fade, but you've also got to keep in mind that that's the way these things are designed. All right, so let's see. So the magic wand tool is a selection tool. When I click on a pixel, it selects pixels that are within its tolerance range. So when I clicked on this little like light bluish pixel here, all these colors were within 150 tolerance range. So if my say tolerance was five and I click that same pixel, it only grabs stuff that is touching close to it, all right? Then I also have a feature called contiguous. Contiguous means touching. So that's why it only grabbed pixels that were in that tolerance range within that area. But if I turn contiguous off and deselect by selecting nothing, then click on that same pixel, it's gonna select stuff that are within that tolerance range all throughout the image. All right, so what I'm gonna do to get this background away, I do want it to be white within the digital part here. But I'm going to get rid of this little blue speck that's not supposed to be there. I'm going to get rid of the background here. So let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. All right. And then I'm going to click here in the white. All right. So it's grabbing it universally throughout the entire image because I forgot to check contiguous. So now I'm clicking there again. But it's not grabbing here close to the edge. Let's zoom in to show you what that looks like. So it's not grabbing all those pixels around there. Let's hit Control V to deselect. So if I zoom in here, you notice that there is actually a little bit of color around here. Your computer picks up everything. All right, so let's see what we can do. Let's go back to the magic wand. I can do that by hitting W on my keyboard as well. It's a really good idea to download uh, your hotkeys uh, from Adobe. So that way you can keep like a little list next to your computer. It makes your um, graphic designing a lot more efficient if you learn like the basic stuff like Control C, Control V for copy and paste. All these little hotkeys are listed uh, down by the side of those features. So you can use these to go through and just navigate through Photoshop quicker. All right, so let's go back to this. Let's increase our tolerance to say like, let's go up to 100. And I want contiguous on because I only want to grab stuff that's touching. So it gets really close in there. Let's zoom into the edge to see how close it gets. All right, so it's right there. I notice that it's gonna grab everything that I need. Yeah, okay. So let's see what happens if I hit 150 this time. Let's go back to Magic Wand and see if it gets closer to the edge. 150. And then I'll click over here. 
So yes, it tightened in a little bit more, meaning it's going to get rid of some of these pixels, these little faded pixels right here on the edge, so that way it doesn't look white around the edge of the graphic. All right, so then to get rid of it, I'd have to delete it. But right now, I, the, uh, it is a background layer, all right? I need to turn it into an actual layer before I can delete that stuff out. To do that, all I have to do is just double click the layer itself. And it asks me new layer. I can name it if I want to. And just click OK. So now that it's a layer, when I hit delete, it gives me the checkerboard background. Photoshop uses this checkerboard to be a um, uh, represent a transparency, uh, absence of color, all right, or just no pixels whatsoever. All right, let's zoom out here. I notice that I still have that little blue spot in there. Let's zoom in over here to this TM. So I got in close there. I don't have any weird pixels out of place. All right, I'm zoomed way in, so that's why it looks a little bit jagged. But this is the size I'm going to be printing it, so you're not really going to tell. All right, so let's get this little spot in the middle here. I'm going to use that same technique. I'm going to use that magic wand. I'll click inside there. I'm too far of a tolerance when I click on this blue, so it's grabbing the black as well. So I don't want to do that. So I need to decrease my tolerance. Let's go down to 100. All right, so now I grab that blue there without grabbing anything else. So now I can hit delete. I'm going to deselect by clicking off and uh, off of the screen. Zoom out a little bit. All right, so now I've gotten rid of my background. All right, so now we're at the point where we want to start setting this up for a left chest. All right, standard left chest logos do not go over five inches wide. Okay. So you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit because I don't have all the materials in here to kind of physically show you. All right, so within here, I want to make my image to the size of the uh, that I want it printed for doing a left chest logo. And I would probably save uh, the original graphic uh, so that way it's at its original size and everything. Um, so that way I don't mess up the original. All right. So let's see, let's go up here to image. I want to make sure that my image is centered within here, that I have the same distance from the bottom of the image, top of the image, edge, and so forth. So a cool little tool that Photoshop gives you is a thing called trim. So what I can do is trim away uh, the uh, canvas that does not have pixels in it. So let's see, let's just go, let's clear out the transparent pixels by clicking from the top, left, bottom, and right. So now you notice that it kind of trims into the image. So I know for a fact that this image is centered within this canvas here. All right, so now we're going to make it to the size that we want. So I'm going to go to image, image size. All right, so the width. Remember I said it shouldn't really go over five inches wide or just too wide for a standard left chest. It looks like it would be like a front, uh, like a full front logo versus just a left chest. So usually standard for a left chest logo is like three and a half to like four and a half, somewhere in there. So we're just going to go, I'm going to just do this and pick a number, four inches. So you notice that it, uh, it adjusted the height as well because I have a little lock feature. So I'll click OK here. Now I've got an actual four inch logo, DTG logo, that I want to print to a left chest. How do I get this in a specific spot so that way if I have six, say, small shirts that the logo hits in the exact same spot? So this is where the fun part comes in. Okay, so what I can do is I will go to like Office Depot or something like that and I will pick up a, a mouse pad, like one or two mouse pads that are kind of the thicker ones, the real cushy ones. They're, they're probably about a quarter inch thick, all right? That's the one you want to look for. Um, what I want you to do to that mouse pad is to cut it to a five by five square, a perfect square. And, and then what we're going to do with those mouse pads, we'll just set those to the side for a second. So put that over in your mind. All right, so now I have an image four inches wide, and I'm going to put it in a specific spot on my printer so that way I move the shirt to the design instead of the design to the shirt. It makes it a lot easier. All right, 
So let's see. Let's make the canvas size instead of the image size, the background, to be 5 by 5. So when I click OK, now I have my image centered within a 5x5 five five box. All right, so we'll save this as. File, save as. We're going to say DT Digital, and I'll just put left chest. Click Save. All right, so now I've got my image prepped. I've got no background on it, and I have it on a 5x5 five five squared center. You following it wrong, Randy? Is it, uh, have we lost you or anything like that? Okay. So now I'm going to reduce Photoshop and I'm going to open up my RIP software. So under the RIP software here, I'm going to choose the graphic. Let me go ahead and install my, uh, I don't think I have the M2 installed on here yet. Yep. Let me go ahead and add this real quick. So that way you can see your setup instead of the Viper 2. It's a little bit different. And also going through these printer packages and stuff like that with all the different cues and stuff, this will be uh, in, your, in that video that I'll send you later on. All right, so I'll finish this. Then my cues become active. <clears throat> all right. So, like I said, when we started this out, we made a decision that we were going to print this to a colored shirt. Um, and I do want to print black ink in the design because it has a black outline. Uh, we'll just imagine it's a blue shirt, okay? So I'm going to click over here on my color shirts. I want it to be a nice, uh, solid print. So I'm going to go to my M-Series. Um, we'll do color graphics best, all right? You have two different cues that come in. You have graphics, the cues that have graphics in the name and ones without it. All right. The difference between those two is graphics are for your like cartoonish, like illustrations, logos, things like that. Whereas the ones without graphics in the name are for your more photorealistic uh, stuff like uh, photography, um, sunset pictures, things like that. So it's not as saturated. If you used the ones without graphics or used the ones with graphics uh, to print like a piece of photography, like a person, their skin tones become a little bit orangish, uh, like they, they used a spray tan because it's oversaturated color. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just use color graphics best here. I'm going to choose my, I'm only going to do one of them just for this example here. Let's minus this out so we can see our preview. All right, so now I'm going to import that same design, the left chest logo that I uh, made. So here it is, DTD Digital Left Chest. Click OK. So now I have that 5x5 five five square with my design in it centered. OK. So now I'm going to put this in a specific spot. I'm going to kind of put it up here in this left chest area. So I'm going to do it 6 inches over from the left and then 1 inch from the top. So that's kind of in that left chest area. Now, we're going to hold this here for where we get ready to print because I got to be able to put that mouse pad on my printer at a specific spot so that way I know that this logo is going to hit it. So let's go back to Photoshop real quick. Let me show you a little trick. All right, so from here, what I can do is I uh, Photoshop works in layers, so I have my layers palette over here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a new layer. I want it to be above the uh, layer that has the color in it. So I've now got this one on the bottom and this one on the top. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click on uh, my foreground color to be white. All right. And then I'm going to paint bucket fill this. Uh, let's see. Paint bucket fill. I'm going to fill this area with white. So now I've got a white box that is exactly 5 by 5. Now here's my little trick. So I go down here to this FX button, which is where you can add different uh, styles and stuff like that. I'm going to add a stroke. Stroke is an outside line uh, that goes around the outside edge of a particular object. Our object happens to be a 5x5 five five box. All right, so then I can do it at one or two. 
uh, so that way I can see it. And I'm going to change the position of the stroke to the inside, all right? Because you have three choices outside, that means the stroke would be on the outside of the 5x5, five five, so you wouldn't be able to see it because it's outside the document area. Centered, half of that line would be on the outside, half of it would be on the inside, so it would be a really thin line. So I'm just going to go to the inside, so that way it puts the stroke on the inside of the object. So that way the outside edge of that stroke or that line will be exactly 5x5. Five five. So I click OK there. Can't really see it because it's just right on the edge here and it's black. Okay, so now I'm going to save this again. Control S. Go back to my RIP software. And instead of going to my color shirt, because I don't want to print it under base or a big white square, I'm going to go to my white shirt here. There it is, white shirt for the MC. So I can either do the uh, fast cues if I want. It doesn't really matter. All right. But I'm going to import that exact same image now that it has a white box on it with the stroke to the inside. So now I can see that little white box there. Now, the reason I chose the white shirt cue is because I had a white box. I don't want to print white. So the white shirt cues don't print with white ink. They only print with color. So the only thing it's going to print is that black stroke. Kind of following along here. So let's see. Let's minus this out a little bit. And I'm going to put this in the same place I put my other one. Do six inches over. One inch down. All right. Then I will physically print this to an empty platen. All right. If I was doing two of them, I would go to two up same, and I would put this both in the, the exact same position. So then it would print that black box directly to my platen. All right. So now I have a black square on my platen that's exactly five by five. So now I'm going to take that mouse pad that I cut to an exact five by five uh, uh, diameter. And I will put either some double-sided tape or a little uh, spray adhesive to the back of it. And then I'm going to stick it right there where that square was. All right. So now I've got a mouse pad stuck to my platen that is six inches over, one inch down on top here in that left chest area. And then I would go back over here to my color shirts where I have that other design that I wanted. And guess what? I've got that same square, but without the white box, just the logo in there at exactly six inches over, five inches down. All right, so let's see. Let me, then I've got to prep the shirt. All right. Let me see if I can find an example of a shirt real quick, just an image of one. I'm going to go to images. I'm just using, you don't have to go in and do this for the left chest logo. Normally you would print it, but I'm just going to use the picture up here on the screen so that way I can better explain it. All right, so let's see, t-shirt, template. All right, we'll use this one as an example. View image, save image as. Let's see, let's open this up so I can show you here what I mean. So then I would start getting my shirt ready. All right, the shirt, say it was on my table here, okay? I know the standard for left chest logos, all right, is to find the center of the design and put it to a specific location. Uh, I got that information from uh, doing embroidery, all right? This is where I came up with this trick. Because I can always find the center of the logo. All right. So to find the center of the left chest, where it should be, what I do is kind of draw an imaginary line straight down here. It would look sort of like, let's see if I can do this real quick. Kind of a straight line down this way. 
But it's, uh, and I'll paint by Philip so you can kind of see it. All right, and then I would draw another imaginary line about one inch up from the armpit here. All right, so now with these imaginary lines that I've drawn, that's kind of the center of my left chest logo, is right in this area. And this one should probably be over just a little bit, so let's, let's move this over. It'll look a little bit more, I want to make it a little bit more accurate for you again. Hmm, it's not going to let me do that. Okay. All right, but imagine it, it's going to be kind of like right here to this area. Let's go back. Right there. That's better. And this is my imaginary line this way. Okay, so that looks a little bit clean. So this would be your standard for finding a left chest logo center. All right. So what I would do is I would lay my shirt on the table here. All right. And then I would kind of use my finger, draw down, and then draw over. And then I would use like... Um, like a tip of a ballpoint pen, but without having uh, the actual pen part extended, like a push button pen. And I would make, I would press a little dent in the shirt so that way I have, it's marked it. All right. So once it's marked, that's the center. All right. So then what I do, and then I've already had the shirt pre treated um, and kind of pressed and ready to go, mark my center. And then what I'll do is fold the shirt directly in half. Oops, sorry about that. Do it directly in half here. And then fold it. And then kind of press it with my hand down the side so it kind of creates a seam going right down the center there. There we go. So it has a seam that goes right down the center. I just press it in my hand, like hold it up and just kind of push it down. So now I've got this little fake little uh, seam going down here to find the center. I have my dot that I pressed in with a pen, all right, without leaving any ink on it, of course, all right. So then I'll come back over to my platen. When I'm putting it on my platen here, that center line will be kind of towards the center, and I'm going to place that dot that I made directly in the center of this mouse pad that's on my platen, all right. Follow it along. Good deal. All right, so then once I have that hooped, and even a little bit of the collar can be up here, so that way it will, um, uh, it, the mouse pad will raise the printed area above where that collar comes up. And this will pop up on like uh, like small or youth shirts and stuff like that, where it'll be up on the platen. So if it was up on the platen and I didn't have this mouse pad here, that means that collar would be higher uh, than the, uh, the printed area, which is your left chest area. So that's why I put that mouse pad there. Plus, it gives me a visual. So then I have the dot in the center. I have that seam that's basically following the edge here. If it was kind of going at an angle, you know your shirt's not straight. So that gives you the uh, kind of a visual of keeping your shirt straight. So it would go your little center line that you kind of folded and pressed in would be right here in the center of the platen. Or not in the center of the platen, but just uh, make sure it's, that center seam is uh, parallel to the edge of the platen. So that way you know it's straight. Then I would push my platen in manually, so that way that the, the, the cover would be going across right around this mouse pad. So that way that the little uh, gap lasers uh, pick up where I'm printing, which is the pocket. All right. I always manually unlock the head and slide it over above the pad to make sure it's not going to hit it. And so I'll bend down and make sure it's not going to get too close. The proper gap between the top shirt surface that's supposed to be printed and the bottom of the print head is about two millimeters. It's about the size of a nickel. All right? Then I would hit print. And I would repeat that process for the same for each shirt. Now, by marking your shirts, that mark is going to be in a different spot on depending on the size of the shirt. So 
and it'll be a standard, so your extra large will still be where it needs to be because you're drawing down from that collar and over from the armpit from your pet difference. So that way when you've got all these people standing up for a company photo, your logos won't be going one up here on their chest, one to underneath their armpit, stuff like that. It's got to be consistent. So basically what you're doing is moving the shirt to where the graphic is going to print. Makes it a lot easier. And you don't have to buy any specialty platens or anything like that. So don't ever say we didn't do anything for you. I saved a couple bucks here. <laughs> all right. Any questions on that? That pretty much, did you kind of get everything? Or It's a pretty simple process. I mean, a lot of people don't think about it that way, but, I mean, once you start understanding or thinking like a printer, you can always tell the printer to print to a specific spot. Now, if you just had a shirt hooped up there, and whether it be large, do I put it down two inches, do I put it down one inch, then it becomes all confusing, and you got to write all these numbers down so you remember it the next time. So this just gives me an actual visual. I can actually see this mouse pad on there. And I can see my dot. I can see my center seam. And I can make sure that it uh, stays centered. And that the uh, location will be... I mean, you, if you do have a fudge factor, and it's kind of a industry acceptable that you can be, say, a quarter inch off, that, that's perfectly fine. But when you're like, one of them's an inch higher than the other, that's when you start having issues. All right. So hopefully this was informative. And I did record this, so I will save this, and um, I will send that video as well if that helps out. So let me go ahead and stop the recording now that we've finished. And hopefully this has been informative.